How are we all doing? I hope this is working. Are you digging this? Oh yeah. Seriously? All right. I think we can throw that into the background and enough joking around. So where, um, where are we at today? So today I want to kind of start looking at some stuff with, with Envoy. Specifically, what I want to do is I want to show you some, some routing with Envoy. And I think like Envoy is, is fast becoming this like, you know, central proxy that's used by, well, everything. And I think for a very good reason. It's a, it's a very, very, very good tool. Now, most of the time when you're dealing with Envoy, you're going to be kind of like dealing with things through, well, another tool. I mean, you're going to be using something like Console Connect, or you're going to be using Istio, or, or sort of AWS's App Mesh. Um, you know, a number of different tools use Envoy. There's some really, really great API gateways, uh, DataWise Ambassador, Solo's um, API Gateway with Glue. Really, really, really good tools. And I kind of want to cover a, a few of those in, in this uh, series of, of all things microservices. But today, what we are going to look at is just plain old, plain old Envoy. Because believe it or not, plain old Envoy is actually really, really, really powerful. A lot of the things that you see with modern sort of service meshes and, and sort of technologies it's just configuration of Envoy. And, and I think it would be a lot easier if, if kind of... I think the Envoy documentation is really good. Just I think it takes a little bit of understanding of the architecture. So that's what I'm going to show you today. We're going to set up some simple examples. We're going to see how we can do TCP load balancing. We're going to see how we can do HTTP routing. And we're also going to see how we can do HTTP routing in Kubernetes because... All the things, right? So let's dig in. So the first thing that we kind of need to look at when you, you start thinking about Envoy is, well, what is it? Well, Envoy is a, a, an application, single applications written in C++, I believe. Very, very, very good, very popular community around that. And if we go over to kind of GitHub and Envoy proxy, you can kind of, uh, you can see the main project there, CNCF project. I think it's a really, really important tool. The, the architecture of Envoy is something that you've got to consider. And, and this will kind of make sense when we start looking at the configuration. But the way that Envoy is kind of composed is that you have, well, I like to think of them in terms of inbound and outbound, but we have inbound, so that's a listener. So something that is inbound, so a port and a, an IP address. So Envoy will listen on a particular port and an IP address. A connection that comes into that port and IP address goes through a filter chain. And a filter chain is, is kind of made up of a number of different things, but you can kind of chain things together. You can have basic kind of HTTP connections. You can look at things like doing JWT validation and uh, you can... You can do some really sophisticated routing with HTTP, so, so very sort of protocol-specific filtering and, and also um, relational databases and, and things like that. And we've also got TCP proxy and UDP in, in the latest version 113. So it, it's, it's a kind of a very neat little tool. Now, when it comes to stuff coming into Envoy, it's a proxy, so it has to go out to somewhere. So the outbound stuff is handled by something called clusters, and a cluster is made up of endpoints. Now, generally, kind of when you're looking at an endpoint, they're provided by things like console services catalog. They're provided by things like Kubernetes, the service discovery uh, via Istio. And, and, and that's kind of like how it gets things, and that's through sort of a, this dynamic cluster setup, so the EDS assignment, and we'll look at that. But what you can also do is just use static load assignments. So Envoy configuration is just YAML or JSON. You can generate it yourself in a number of different ways. You could use console template if you wanted to. I'm not entirely certain I'd recommend it. I, I kind of would rather you use like a, something with a control plane like, um, like Ambassador or, or Glue. But 
it's worth seeing how, because sometimes it's pretty useful. So let's dig in. What do we got? Well, so I've just kind of scaffolded some, some basic onboard configuration, but I, I just want to kind of show you our application setup. So what I have in the, the application is for TCP, two APIs. I've got API one, so two API instances, one and two. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to load balance just using round robin between these two APIs. So I'm defining the APIs here, and these are just going to be Docker containers. I'm, I'm just using a, um, a little tool I wrote called fake service, which fakes a service. And, um, and I've got an Envoy proxy, and I'm just using Envoy's uh, Docker container. So I'm using the Alpine version of Envoy, the latest one, 113.1. Uh, and inside of that Docker container, all I'm doing is mounting the Envoy configuration. So by default, when the Docker container starts, it's going to start Envoy, which is as simple as calling the, the Envoy process, and it's going to specify the configuration file, which is located in etc. Envoy, Envoy YAML. So I'm just going to mount my Envoy YAML, which I have here, into that location. Right. So let's have a look at those listeners. So we're defining a listener. And, and again, Envoy supports multiple listeners, but this, this is a, a kind of a very basic um, listener. Um, so I'm going to define an address. So what, what, what do I want the listener to listen on? Now, it could be a specific IP address or it could be all IP addresses in this instance. And I also specify the port that I want to listen on. And I'm, I'm just going to listen on port 80. Now, every listener has a filter chain. And every filter chain consists of multiple sort of filters, network filters. So what we need to do in order to do our network load balancing is, is two things. One is we need to define our filter, our network filter, and the second is we need to define a cluster which points to our API service. So let's let's have a look at that. So over to the to the Envoy docs. So I'm going to kind of go straight over to API and I'm going to look at the V2 API reference. And I'll put all of these links uh, down below there. But I'm going to look at the listener configuration. So if you look at kind of listener configuration here, and what um, listener configuration has is a name, that address that we saw, and these filter chains. It's got a kind of another other kind of capabilities here. We can kind of specify a number of different setups, such as the kind of the timeout. And, and there's actually some specific settings we can put on each, each filter. But we're looking at the very, very basics. So filter chains, a list of filter chain to consider for the listener. The filter chain with the most specific is matched for a connection. So as I said, we, we can have kind of multiples of these chains. And if I kind of click through here, we can kind of see this, this kind of setup. So what does this, what does this look like? Well, well, ultimately what you end up defining is a listener filter. Now, the key thing about listener filters is you'll see here that it just has like typed config, right? And and this is kind of when things start getting a little bit lost because it's like, well, it's a dead end. It's just a typed config. But the thing is that the listener that you define here in name is of a particular filter type. So here's some of the network filters. You can see we've got TLS authentication. We can do things like simple um, authentication external we can call out to a service external service for authentication we can do things like uh, mongo proxying my sequels uh, rate limiting redis and and kind of and so and so on what we're actually going to do is just look at a simple tcp proxy and a simple tcp proxy is just going to allow us to take that inbound connection and load balance it to an upstream cluster. One of the things which I think is really amazing about Envoy is that there are a huge, huge number of statistics like out of the box. And 
you can kind of see here all of those statistics that are going to be available to you. You can configure Envoy to output statistics in, in a number of different formats, StatsD, Datadog, um, like you name it. There, there is a, a sort of a plugin for that. And maybe if you're interested, put a message in the comments below and we can, we can look at how you configure Envoy to emit metrics with a later date. But for now, let's take a look at that configuration of the filter chain. So we're going to define this, this filter. And with, with every filter, what we, we kind of going to have is, well, we need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this envoy.tcp proxy. Okay. And with, with kind of every filter, we have to have that typed config. And if you remember, the typed config is kind of like, it's kind of like a loose interface. So it, it's so that you can kind of configure Envoy. And, and we've kind of, this is really important, but this is one of the most complicated bits that most people will find. So what we do is we're going to define this, this element here, and we're going to call it type. And then the type is going to be type dot Google APIs dot com slash envoy dot config dot filter yeah dot network okay are you lost yet dot tcp proxy dot v2 dot tcp proxy now the name of that is is kind of corresponding to the the, the kind of the protocol buffer the kind of the underlying thing which is configured there. And if you look at kind of the, the API reference here, we can kind of see all of these these configuration elements as, as their, their pure kind of protocol buffer. And in terms of where you get the name from, well, it comes from here. So config.filter.network.v2tcpproxy.proto. And again, if we kind of just click through to the documentation, you can see here the, the protobuf that defines that API. The, the reason for this, in kind of you're defining it inside of the, the listeners configuration like this as well, but you can also configure listeners dynamically. So it's possible to kind of set them up as well. But um, let's, let, let's kind of keep, uh, keep digging into this. So we have that uh, that type, and I'm I'm pretty positive that I've uh, I've spelled that wrong, and we'll we'll get to that in a moment. But um, what we also need is the the kind of the upstream cluster. So I can specify a cluster, and what is the name of the cluster that I need to specify? Great question, because I haven't defined it yet, but I am going to define it, and I'm going to call the API. So if you remember what I was saying when I kind of looked earlier at this kind of this architectural overview, you kind of have this logical separation. You've got an inbound, which is kind of the listener, the filter chain and the filter. And then you've got this outbound section, which is your clusters and your endpoints. So we've defined the listener, but now we need to define the cluster. So to, to define the cluster, and again, all of this goes in the static resources because um, I'm configuring it all statically. It can also be configured through the, uh, uh, the gRPC uh, XDS API, but a little bit too much advanced for this video. But let's um, clusters, okay? And then we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it API. And if you kind of start looking into clusters, and let's kind of dig into that documentation again. I think one of the successes of, of using Envoy is, is familiarizing yourself with the way that the documentation works and the way that it kind of ties together with the concepts. So if I look at clusters and then I go to the cluster object, you can see it's got all of these properties. I can define the name, the type. Um, EDS cluster configuration, that would mean that it gets the endpoints from an API that you configure which corresponds to um, Envoy's on-point discovery service. But we're kind of just going to use the very, very kind of 
static um, static configuration. So let's look. So we've defined cluster. Okay. All right. So what is the the kind of we're not going to set an EDS property. What we are going to do is define endpoints. So let's take a look at how we do that. Back over here. So we've got a name, API. And then endpoints. So we're going to statically configure our endpoints here. And we are going to specify load balancing endpoints. And inside of a load balancing endpoint, so we, we've got a number of um, areas of recursion here. We specify an endpoint. So an endpoint has to have an address. And the address is going to conform to um, Envoy's standard socket address. So this is kind of Envoy's proto buff object for defining uh, an endpoint and it's it's just this you see it's just kind of that address port value so i'm going to specify address and because i'm using docker i can reference the name of the container so i'm just going to specify api1 dot container dot shipyard and i'll, I'll explain this convention uh, just in a moment the port is 1990 and what I'm also going to specify is that IPv4. So I just want to switch IPv4 compat true. So let's just quickly look at those options in the documentation. And not so easy to see because I am so zoomed in. Come on. Oh, well, there we go, over here. Right. So the address, it's a core address. So socket address. So this is kind of how you, you learn to sort of navigate through. You've got you to go thinking that everything is, um, is, is kind of the documentation is all referring to that protobuf. So I've got the protocol, the address I've specified, the port value, can use um, named port if we're kind of using specific DNS resolution. The resolver name, um, two different options there. I can kind of specify things like uh, IP addresses, um, strict DNS or logical DNS. Uh, we're just going to kind of use the default, which is fine. And um, IPv4, so kind of just to enable compatibility that's going to bind both IPv4 and 6. So that's how we, we define a single endpoint. If we want to define another endpoint, well, that's easy. I'm just going to kind of copy that endpoint configuration and I'm going to specify it twice there. So that should do it. So let's, um, let's, let's run our example. So kind of just a quick recap there. What we're doing is we're defining a listener. The listener is going to listen on the socket address 00080. So, so any IP address, port 80. And when a connection comes in, it hits a filter chain. The filter chain is going to match the first filter and then it's going to kind of handle where that connection should go. So the filter, I'm going to hit just standard TCP proxy. And then what I'm going to do is I've got to specify the type of the object that's used for the filter chain. So I'm using this, this at type, and then I specify the, the kind of the, I suppose the full package name for the, um, the filter as, as kind of defined in the protobuf. So that's kind of proxy v 2 tcp proxy. Then once we match that, what the TCP proxy is going to do is it's going to forward that connection to an upstream defined by cluster. Cluster here, we're defining two endpoints, 
and we're just going to use standard round robin load balancing. We could do things like maglev if you want to be able to do kind of hash based load balancing. So if you're kind of an upstream Redis, uh, or you could do random, you can do kind of weighted load balancing, very, very configuration. We're just doing round robin for now, but we're going to bounce between these two APIs. So let's have a look at this. TCP load balancing. And will this work? So what I'm doing is um, I'm just using a tool called Shipyard. And um, Shipyard, Shipyard just allows you to kind of define cloud native applications. So things like Docker containers, Kubernetes clusters, and stuff like that. And, and you can kind of just define it as YAML like this. So it's, it's kind of like Docker Compose on steroids or Terraform for local, um, local machines. So let's have a look. Let's see what's going on here. Well, the first thing is that I was right that I did make a typo because my Envoy container hasn't started. So let's have a, a debug and see why. So if I do Docker logs, and if I look at the Envoy here, we can see what's going on. So we're saying uh, exiting uh, the configuration when it's been trying to parse, line 26, end of map not found. So I love YAML as much as I love GoMod. And uh, line 26, it'll be indentation somewhere. Let's play hunt the indentation. Actually, you know what? Let's not play hunt the indentation. Let's just um, look at an example that I did earlier for brevity. Uh, git. Right. There we go. So there's our example. Let's just uh, run that again. kill my Envoy container, and I'm going to run that again. All of these examples are in GitHub. I will put that in the, the link below. This time, we've got everything up and running. So what I've done is I've, I've, just, um, I've just used Shipyard to define an in, ingress, which is going to point to my, from my local machine to the Docker container, which is running Envoy on port 80. So if I curl localhost, you can see there that I've hit API 1. If I curl localhost again, you can see I'm hitting API 2. Localhost again, 1, 2. So we're doing kind of standard round robin load balancing between those things. If I kind of look at the, the Envoy logs there, and you can kind of see that, that so there's nothing much going on because I'm not running in debug mode, but Everything is is up and running. So that's a really, really simple example. So that's how you would do TCP load balancing. How do we do something a little bit more complicated? How do we do protocol specific routing? Right, let's have a look. So what we, we kind of have to do next is we look at routing. And routing is again going to use that kind of that setup. We this time have got in our applications, we've got a front end container and a back end container. So we have an application that looks like this. So the Envoy proxy sits here. Then if somebody uses the a get with a path of slash, they're going to hit the front end application. If they use get with a path of, path of slash API, they're going to hit the API. So kind of pretty standard load balancing. So how do we do that? Well, what we have is some Envoy YAML yet again. So we, we this time have got a cluster and we've got a cluster called front end and the front end is just going to go to front end. But we've also got a second cluster called API. And API is going to go to, well, API. 
But what we need to do is define that filter chain. So we need to define what the, the kind of the filter chain is going to look like in order to be able to do that. So for a filter chain, this time we're not going to use TCP load balancing. What we're going to do is we're going to use HTTP. And the HTTP connection manager, let's take a look at that in the docs. So again, back over to listener in the V2 API section. We're going to look at listener there and it's going to say the filter chain navigate through the filter chain to the specific filters and all of these supported filters. So what we have are those support filters. Now, in addition to this, we have a very complicated filter, which is the HTTP connection manager. And the HTTP connection manager, well, it pretty much lets you do anything you could imagine. So you can, you can kind of manipulate headers, you can add headers, you can take them away, you can modify the values on them, you can kind of do traffic shaping and splitting, you can do routing, of course, everything is going to give you statistics, you can do protocol aware HTTP retries and um, failures and, and, and some really, really incredible stuff. I just want to kind of look at pretty, pretty basic, um, pretty basic routing. So how do we how do we do routing? And again, these docs might look a little bit confusing, but you know, just bear with them. You will get used to it. And a little bit trial and error, but there's there's a lot of great communities, a great Slack um, group as well. So again, filters. What are we going to do? We need to define a new filter. So we can define a filter, and it's going to be Envoy. I'm going to use HTTP Connection Manager. So a filter has a typed config. And, well, again, we've got that type because we're going to define the type as it would be in the, the protobuf. And that's going to be type.googleapis.com slash envoy.config.filter.network HTTP connection manager dot v2 dot HTTP connection manager. All right, we're there. Okay, so we, we kind of do that. Now, what we, we kind of need to do is we need to look at that HTTP connection manager um, specific configuration, but we kind of need to do things like specify the codec. So let's take a look at that. Um, we have a root. We've gone too far. HTTP connection manager. What we actually want is just the configuration on this. V2 API reference. There we go. So the codec type, um, we can define what kind of codec it's going to use. So you can specify specifically whether you want to use HTTP or whether you, yeah, yeah just, everything's nice and brief, right? HTTP 1 or HTTP 2. Now, kind of um, HTTP 2, obviously, if you're going to use gRPC and things like that, then, then I'll kind of maybe look at how you, you handle that. But um, you can also specify to auto. Auto will will kind of attempt to make a best guess of, of what the protocol is. And, and if it's upgradable, it'll upgrade it to, to HPD2. I'm just going to specify a kind of a hard value of HTTP1 because that's all I'm using. So then what we, we kind of need to do is we can define this root config. So the root config is kind of going to be the, the, the kind of the definition. So we'll be able to pick up from the path or the HTTP header or something like that and send it to a particular backend. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it local config. And I've got to specify virtual hosts. Virtual hosts. And let's specify our first virtual host, which is going to be backend. 
So if you've ever configured Nginx and you've kind of looked at backend services, kind of very, very sort of similar, um, similar setup. So we've got name backend. Now, some of the things that we can do here, we can do specific filtering on domain name. So if um, the the backend was was specifically kind of not path based, maybe you want to use host header based kind of uh, routing that api.myservice.com goes to the API and front end goes to, well, front end. We can kind of do that. We can kind of specify all of these sort of options, but but I'm I'm kind of really just interested in, in looking at handling everything for for this one. So once you've defined a domain, you, you specify a root. So the, the domain is a filter, and then you can specify a root, and then you put a match on that, okay, like so. So then I'm going to define a prefix. And a prefix can be a, a regular expression, but what I'm going to define is I'm just going to specify API. So if if I have a, a root that comes in here and it it matches API, then what I'm going to do is I am going to send that to a cluster. And I'm going to send it to the cluster called API. We've got this one down here, right? Now, if I want to define another root, well, I can just add another one very simply here. So I can specify that maybe just slash goes to front end. So that kind of help shows me how I can define my, my root configuration. If I kind of again look over into the, the Envoy documentation and I kind of want to start looking into that, um, that root config, you will see that we've kind of got um, a, a number of different options that we can put in there. But, but let's just kind of look at, um, look at path for now. So the, the kind of the, the last thing that um, we need to look at on the HTTP Connection Manager is uh, extensions, sorry, let me just, I've lost my place in the docs. Go to the chain, filter. There we go. The last thing we kind of need to be sort of looking at, and, and let's just kind of look at the API documentation here is that we can kind of specify a number of different options so we can specify these HTTP filters so what is this all about so the HTTP filters is a list of filters that make up the filter chain for the request for the connection manager so when you define your connection manager what you're also defining is the root config but you also need to kind of specify down here, in addition to this, we need to specify the HTTP filters. Filters. And we're going to do, it's going to be name, envoy, router. And we're just going to use the default options. So I'm bound to have made a typo in that. So let's just uh, save ourselves the trouble. And the code's all there, so you can uh, you can have a play around with that. But let's run this application. So shipyard run. All right. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just going to run that. So I've got my my API here, my front end my backend Docker containers. I've got my Envoy proxy. Same thing, I'm just loading the configuration there. And this is the config that I'm using. So this is my, my kind of simple setup there. And all of that is running. So curl, localhost. And, and what you see there 
when I curl localhost is I'm just hitting front end because you remember our root config said that just slash hits there. But if we do API, then what we're going to do is hit the API endpoint. So we've got kind of, you see there if I do APIs because it's, it's just greedily matching but AP. It's hitting front end, API, hits API. So we, we can kind of set this up and we can configure this um, however we want. It's, it's really, really powerful and, and incredibly, incredibly fast. So I think the configuration takes a little bit of getting used to, but you know, once you've kind of built your, your first example, it, it's very much, much copy pasta. Alrighty, last example. How do you run that in Kubernetes? So we've just been running this in Docker containers so far. But um, let's kind of have a look at how we would do a similar thing in Kubernetes. So Kubernetes. And of course, well, we're just going to set up some Kubernetes services. So this takes uh, just a second. So let me just run my Kubernetes cluster again. I'm just using shipyard run. And this will create me a Kubernetes cluster in Docker and install all of my applications. So the first thing that I need to do when I'm going to run this in Kubernetes is I create a service. Now, I don't need to create a service, but this is just going to give me some entry point to my Envoy. And for my Envoy, I've got that exact same configuration that I had in the previous example. But what I'm doing is I'm putting it into a config map. So you can see here the Kubernetes config map. And that's exactly the same as it was in the previous example. We've got our routes there. We're using the HTTP connection manager. Uh, we've got our clusters. Now, in our clusters, where we're obviously just using the Kubernetes service, and because everything's running in the same namespace, I can just use front end to reference the service or API to reference the service because that's what I've called them. For running Envoy itself, well, I'm just going to run a deployment. So I've got a, a standard Kubernetes deployment. I'm using Envoy Alpine. I'm mounting that config map to a path. And then I'm just loading that into my container. So pretty much exactly the same thing that I was doing with, uh, with Docker Compose, right? Nice and easy. My application, well, I have a service defining my front end goes to my front-end deployment. So again, I'm just using that fake service. And here I've got my API service. That goes to the deployment API. And again, just fake service. So if we take a look at this, and that's all running. We've got our Kubernetes cluster there and our ingress. If I, let me just kubectl get pods and you can see that I've got my envoy pod my front end pod and my API so curl localhost and you can see we're hitting front end so the ingress is hitting this envoy service which is pointing at this envoy deployment envoy is doing that routing for me and it's routing between my API deployment or my front-end deployment, just depending on what that routing table is. So it's it's this is actually a really, really simple way of just getting a very, very quick and easy sort of HTTP load balancing kind of routing thing going inside of your Kubernetes cluster. You, I mean, you can, of course, use Nginx or HAProxy, Traffic. There's some wonderful solutions, but Envoy is, um, is really... I'm, I'm really very taken by it. I think it's a very good piece of software and it, it's just cropping up absolutely everywhere. Um, comparing sort of Envoy with, with Linkerd and and, uh, and things like that, well, uh, Envoy is the, the, the sidecar or the data plane. So we're kind of not talking about service meshes. L uh, Linkerd is a, is a service mesh. Quite often you, you find Envoy will be part of a service mesh. It becomes the data plane. Um, Linkerd doesn't use Envoy. Linkerd has a, its very own proxy, which is an incredible um, proxy in its own right. Very, very fast. Um, Linkerd is the control plane to to that data plane. Istio is the control plane to Envoy's 
uh, data plane and console is the control plane to envoys um, as is AWS app mesh uh, that that's the kind of the control plane but um, this is just very very basic proxy when we're not even looking at um, service mesh or anything like that yet and that's it I well I I hope that you found this useful I hope it's been a, a nice little kind of introduction to well what's going on with with envoy like envoy is powering so much of the web it's, it's a very 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 um very great tool and you're going to see it i think cropping up everywhere there's some wonderful stuff which is kind of going into it we're seeing some some really interesting things around like being able to compile your own filters using webassem and i'm hoping to get some videos on there where we can maybe build a filter for envoy and, and i'll, I'll uh, see if i can bother christian poster to, to come along and do that with me but also, I want to show you in a couple of videos' time, I think it's fair to kind of do things, and we're going to look at uh, Glue, which is an API gateway for Kubernetes built on Envoy, and also Data Wire by Ambassador. We're going to look at both of those things, and we can see how much better it is when you're using a control plane as opposed to having to configure this yourself. But until then, thank you as always. Please don't forget to comment, to like, subscribe, smash the bell button. And well, if there's something you don't like, hit that thumbs down button. Tell me. But for now, where's that music? <laughs>